yourself together before it's too late. Well, Brian, obviously, one of the continuing stories is, and, and, and I think you can use the word, anytime uh, there's a shooting and someone gets killed, even if it's not the intended target, it's a tragedy. And of course, we're talking about the attempt on uh, former President Trump's life in uh, that small town of Butler. Uh, and there's still a lot going on. There's a lot we don't know, but some more facts are, are coming to light. And the one today that really does not paint a great picture of the Secret Service, and we didn't know that, that there was actually a credible threat from Iran. And that was, they were working under a credible threat, which means that what we saw was beefed up security. Uh, so it would be one thing, you know, if it was. So that really is going to be, I think, pose some problems for the Secret Service. Now, what they have, Brian, you know, it's very unfair. Uh, they have a zero failure policy. Uh, they have, you know, one thing they're supposed to do is protect the president, indeed give their life for the president. Um, and this obviously, we don't know why, but I think uh, we know that Republicans have called for an investigation. And while I'm not a big fan of Republicans calling for investigations of things, I think in this case, uh, we need, American people need, the Secret Service honestly needs an investigation. What say you uh, right well, now? Well, from what I had heard, the... and it sounds logical. First of all, can you hear me? We're good? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so the first thing I had heard was, given this was kind of a rather large farm area, that they had to work together, meaning the Secret Service and then the local police. Mm -hmm. So they divvied up what had to be done. Now, you assume the closer you get to Trump, the more you would have the Secret Police. And then... Uh, Brian, you just made a... Wait a minute. You just made a Freudian slip, uh, which is actually true. Trump is not president yet, so we don't have the Secret Police yet. We do have the Secret Service. Now, when he comes... Did I say Secret Police? Has, oh, yeah, okay. I well, said, then, that's, a, that's definitely a Freudian slip. You're actually ahead of your time, but go ahead. All right, Secret Police. Well, anyway... My apologies on that, but it's interesting that I did say that. I didn't even realize I said that. That's right. frightening because sometimes when I say something, it comes true. But anyway, the, the idea would be that the locals kind of know the area in the perimeter and then they would take care of that because you can't, obviously, you can't have 800 secret, uh, se can't have uh, secret police, did I say? Or no, you want to say secret service. Secret service. Oh, Christ. Secret police. I'm thinking Russia. Okay. You want to have. You can't have 600 people in the Secret Service at any one event, at least as far as I know. That would okay. be true, I'm sure. So you would expect that they would coordinate with the local police who do know the area. Say, we get this, you get that. We have to be near the president. We have to put snipers on several buildings, okay? Now, I don't know who is guilty of what, but this reminds me of, of Uvalde, where they Very started much blaming so. each other. And then the governor, you know, the first thing he does, Abbott comes out and says, what a heroic job these people did. He, he, he said the very same thing that they said at 9-11, that the firefighters, you know, only worried about their lives. And they went up the towers. And, and then Abbott tried to, to pull that shit. And then he had egg on his face afterwards. So even to this day, we don't know exactly who fucked up worse in Uvalde. But when it comes to this, again, I, I don't know anything aside from the fact that my speculation is that the closer you get to Trump, the more the Secret Service is involved and they're farther away. Un unless you're talking about snipers, you have the local police, which would do the stuff like crowd control, mm -hmm. watching over things, and they should know the area. Uh, now, I also know that apparently this crooks guy bought a ladder at Home Depot, that he was spotted minutes before this happened and they tried to warn whomever i don't know much more than that because again i don't want to state anything i don't know 
It's just what I heard. And and I assume that the Secret Service knocked him out with a, a, a sniper. I think that's, that's what I know. Safe. That that would all be safe assumptions. Now it raises a couple interesting questions. Okay, and and, and we will maybe some someday we may know some of these answers. Um, yeah, if if he took a ladder, he had to have something to get up on the roof. Okay, right. Obviously. Well, if he took a ladder, could you imagine? <laughs> that's even worse than a gun. You know, in certain ways, carry your ladder. So. Did he, yeah, he, I suppose, again, we're just speculating, but I would suppose he would have had to have um, gotten the ladder there maybe a day before, or, you know, or, I mean, I, I lay it, I, who knows? Yeah, but, I, you wouldn't think he would go to Home Depot at 10 in the morning. If and he, First of all, he had to know in his head the day before that he's going to do it. You don't just oh, decide absolutely. two hours before the event that you're going to do it. This is something he, and I'm sure he expected to die. Or didn't care if he did, yes. Or didn't care if he did. He knew that it would be quick, and that's what it was. It's it probably well, was yeah. painless for the guy, as far as we know. It was probably painless. So yeah, he he certainly would have purchased the ladder. Uh, how they didn't know? I mean, again, there are people in the crowd who apparently, as I said, saw him. Yes. Now you know, and pointed it out. Right. And along those lines, what we don't know, and it's very important, as you talked earlier, you have coordination of at least two agencies and maybe more uh, let's say it could have been a local police with the sheriff's department with you know who knows what else and the secret service but it seems uh, fairly established that more than one person somehow tried and some felt they were successful of contacting the authorities whom we don't know uh well, they wouldn't know. To, I mean, if you were just a common citizen, I wouldn't know the Secret Service's number. I would call the local police or say, nine one one nine, 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 right, nine, nine, nine one one. And you say, right. you got yeah. and, that, and, that, you know, and, we, so, and we don't know. Uh, and it, it, there's all kinds of discrepancies about, you know, was the first, we know. I mean, we know the first call wasn't in a half hour. I mean, they didn't have it. You know, it's a matter of minutes. So right. anyway, but uh, the thing um, uh, and, uh, and it's fairly well established that, again, an officer, I'm assuming not a Secret Service person, because I think what you said makes sense, at that distance uh, away from that, that would be by local, you know, some kind of local police, right. not the Secret Service. Um, and he went what would, so, Honestly, what else would the local police be doing? But him, oh, I mean, you know, maybe well, a little yeah. bit with crowd control or something? I don't know. Well, but, well uh, they, can, they can help with screening. It seems like the perimeter and... They can one thing they can do, uh, I, kind of ironically, and I'll, I'll talk about it in a couple minutes. Um, we have family visiting D.C., and my wife and I are tour guides for the week. And today we happen to visit the FBI um, building, uh, which is now as reinstituted. I'm going to give a plug to the FBI, which I don't <laughs> normally do. Uh, but uh, if you get to Washington D.C., anyone you're watching this, uh, try to get to the FBI. Uh, exhibit. I would give it an A+. Plus. Uh, it used to be the finest thing in D.C. It was canceled. I uh, Actually, they stopped doing tours at the federal building, and they did them where I worked at the museum. For, so for three years, I was conducting FBI tours at the museum. Uh, but now it's back there. But the point is, uh, you get a kind of an upgrade. And somebody asked to ask that question, but not about, they didn't specifically say assassination. But when the FBI works, they said, we take control. So it's the same thing here. The Secret Service would take control, right? But as you said, who would know who would know a Secret Service number to call? So it would be 911. Now, apparently, back to that scene, as the gunman, who I think we're 100% certain was uh, Matthew Crooks, uh, and someone in authority saw him as they went up. Now, did they go up the same ladder? Had he left the ladder? We don't know. But somehow he got up on the roof. And Crooks uh, supposedly uh, put a gun at, and the guy got down. He didn't go up with his gun. You know, it seems, I mean, he didn't go up to shoot him. And uh, there's nothing wrong, I don't think, with going back down, uh, you know, if, you, if you're doing that. I mean, I'm not, but he was spotted. What I think happened is he made Crooks rush the shot. Uh, and that would account for, you know, him not being able right. uh, more, more so than, you know, that. So anyway, we, we, we have that. What we don't know, of course, is Crook's motive. Now, today something came out uh, that is I was not aware of, and maybe 
you when I try to stay on top of this stuff. Alex Jones, one of the most despicable people in the world, is having a tiff with Donald Trump. Did you know that? I did not. I did not know that. And apparently there's a video. I hadn't had time to research it before this show. I'll definitely do it. Or, you, or other you anybody listening to this can do it on their own. Where he actually calls for a Trump assassination. So was this kid influenced by that? Uh, Info you know wars. I mean? Yeah, by you know he was more. Now, you know, why? Why was Alex Jones I, after Trump? I, I don't know. That's why I have to research it. But I mean, it's kind of verified. I've seen it that he there's where he was. I don't know if he called for his assassination, but was uh, you know what probably happens with people like that? They get their egos involved, and Trump didn't do something or did do something that Alex Jones and Alex Jones. You know, I mean, he's facing complete financial ruin, as he should. Uh, so who knows what he would do? And apparently there's a couple other sites now of extreme right wing that aren't as happy with Donald Trump. You know, those of us on the outside, no, let me rephrase that. Those who don't even do what we do, you know, we have, we follow it a little bit because we want to do the show or we're good citizens or whatever. Uh, you know, they think it's all one big happy family. It's not. MAGA is not one big happy family. It's. It, it comes kind of like a, a you know a Republican couple who are really right wing, but they're arguing at night over who has the last drink oh. or something like that. And, and there you are. That's exactly right. So uh, that could be one. My theory, working theory, until I heard that, was this. Now again, I I don't think any of the conspiracy theories are there. I know for I know in not you know I'd say I know in my heart for certain, Joe Biden did not order that hit on donald trump absolutely not he's a catholic he's not he's and 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 donald trump did not order that hit on donald trump which is making the rounds uh no uh so i kind of it appears at this point i think that crooks as a shooter acted alone we still don't know some, but i was trying this on for size so i'm, I'm going to speculate here and say what i thought until i heard about the alex jones thing i thought okay this kid we know that he's been bullied. He's been picked on. Uh, we know uh, if indeed the people who knew him say even as a kid, he wore hunting gear and shooting gear to school. But he, they, he now here's the, here's a picture to paint. Uh, he sat alone at his lunch table. Now, Brian, you're an educator and I was an educator for a long time. And that's really sad. We, I'm sure you saw it. Right. I, but it's I also an indication of fear, too, that you would prefer to be alone than to be with anybody else. Or, Ryan even or, said as much, like with their last yeah, show. Yeah, but but I mean, you know, something's wrong. Okay, right. Uh, people do not tend to sit alone um, in a high school lunch. At least day. not in Western society. Let's put it that way. No, no. I don't even know if they do it anyway. But anyway, yeah. The point is that you know you don't do that, or that means whatever. There's there's it's a, it should be they you know the term red flag. That should be a red flag if you see that. Uh, not in terms of them being a shooter or anything. Just knowing that something's wrong. So uh, and then the the, the two. Uh, classmates of his said that he couldn't make the gun club, the shooting club. Okay. So knowing those facts, I think, I thought, I should say, I don't know that I think it now, uh, this kid just decided, and now he's not a kid, he's 20, I'll show them. Right. I'll I'm going the all the way with the top. I, I, will, I will shoot the president, which very few people have done successfully in history. And, you know, some people you want to make, I mean, he did want to make a name for himself, but I think it would be more a redemption name or, you know, in other words, he might not be even be angry at Donald Trump. Donald yeah. Trump, I mean, think about it. Donald Trump shows up in his city, Butler, Pennsylvania, which he knows, obviously. He's lived there for 20 years. Yeah, he years. might want just a name that he can put himself in history. Yeah, or, or even more than that, that's one possibility. But at the same time, uh, you know, you, you know, and you, we know that high school uh, has long lasting effects on some people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 and if he, if he, All felt he was, if he felt this was the outcast, this is a chance to show them, you know, the, the old story where uh, somebody is kind of nerdy and ugly, a woman and suddenly she blossoms into beauty or somebody was, you know, didn't have the money to dress themselves and they become, you know, a rich financier and they show up specifically to the reunion with the idea. I'll show them. Right. Uh, so it may have been thinking along those lines. But at this point, we, we, we don't know what we did learn something more today about it, with two different reports is what 
Donald Trump says was going through his mind or what he thought. So what happened is he did grant he did grant his first interview, a short interview with the New York Post. And I'm quoting directly from the Post. Uh, Donald Trump said, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be dead. Now, knowing Donald Trump, we don't know whether that's true or, or, or false. But, uh, you know, that's a pretty powerful statement if you believe that he's telling the truth. Uh, we don't know that with Donald Trump. And I'm not saying, you know, anything other than that. But the one that was the most interesting and it's just fascinating and it really captures the 21st century idea of social media that Trump, I don't know who initiated the call. I don't know if Trump called, but I'm assuming uh, Robert Kennedy, you know, called Trump, uh, offered his condolences or whatever, but they had a phone conversation, right? And in this phone conversation back and forth, uh, Trump, I guess, trying to establish common ground or whatever, uh, talked about his beliefs about vaccines because- Right, uh, I, Ke I heard that. Ke yeah. Kennedy is one of the leading anti-vaxxers in the country and it's been a long time doing that. Uh, and, you know, Trump went through, uh, you know, which is completely wrong about he has seen kids get 20 vaccinations and suddenly something changes. It's just Trump being Trump. But here's where it gets fascinating. That conversation, and it was a conversation, apparently it had to be on speakerphone, I guess. And uh, another Kennedy's son recorded it and put right. it on the media and it was immediately pulled off. And, uh, the Kennedy candidate has come on apologizing. I'm sorry for this. Well, you know, what's seen and heard can't be unseen and heard. Right. But uh, so, so you really have this this idea. You know, we don't know whether Trump's telling the truth or not. Uh, the other thing is, and you know, you know, that you know, that quote that goes around with, the, you know, with any shooting. Is it too soon? Is it too soon? Uh, at, well, I don't care if it's too soon or not. Uh, if you noticed uh, his first appearance at the convention, was not his first public appearance. His first public appearance after this was he went out the next morning and played golf. Um, now you can say whatever you want. I mean, he was always a hero. No, I don't think he was injured that badly. I think we can say that. But did you see the big um, wad he had on his ear? And people were saying, who puts a woman's sanitary napkin <laughs> on their ear? And if it wasn't, but it did look like that. Right. Like so that. so we, we know a number of things. Uh, uh, we know a little bit more, but what we don't know, Brian, is enough. But as I said, it just so worked out for me uh, as I was going through the FBI, uh, a person who, who had a similar job that I had at the museum. And we started talking about, you know, actually exhibits. And I asked him what happened to the uh, when we were at the museum, we had the Unabomber's cabin. And I said, did it get back to you? And it did. But in the course, we started talking a little bit about it. And um, it was interesting uh, what I kind of and, you know, she's not official or anything, but she, we're talking about it. And. I walked away uh, pretty much understanding this is fact. Uh, number one, that um, Trump was shot. I did ask specifically because she looked at the initial videos. She was part of the team that came in. And I said, you know, it didn't look to me like a bullet grazing. I said, is there any possibility? They said there were some glass fragments found. Is there any possibility that it could have hit a teleprompter, right? Because that's a plexiglass. And she said, uh, that they actually examined the teleprompter and there was no damage so that blew that's what that I heard too right that that blew my theory on that uh and the the working thing right now is the bullet did graze donald trump that's i mean that's uh, the official theory at this point um the also the working theory is that the secret service agents around him on stage did what they were supposed to do exactly Although this morning joe did you know and morning joe said for about seven to nine seconds, he had it. He was oh, but then again, the way Trump was moving didn't make it easy. Well, here's He's too here's, busy doing this shit. Yeah, you know, and everybody's you know, and you've got two. You know, it's interesting. I mean, we're so divided as America. You couldn't have chosen when you came up with the idea of the show. You could have chosen any three words that could any better describe America than divided we stand. That that's exactly where we are. Right, that's what it is. So every, everybody's view on this, uh, you know, that defiant. Uh, <laughs> some of the funnier things I've seen, I, well, not funny, but of course, that defiant fight, fight, fight. How brave is Trump? How great a man? A bullet can't even stop him. Or the other side, God deflected that. No, God didn't deflect the bullet. But anyway, and then you've got the other side that said, oh, no, that means it was all staged. He knew, you know, so it's no, none of that I don't think is actually. Believe me, we know that that was real because 
if you if somebody thinks they have divine intervention for him, well, then the next time he has a rally, don't bring the Secret Service and let that divine well, intervention. Well, all of that, all of that is true. But uh, so, you know, it, like I said, I, it appears and I'm taking this from what this FBI agent, you know, he didn't go into any secrets or reveal anything uh, that the working knowledge is at the stage was at least handled OK and, you know, pretty much did their job. But that the failure to see that shooter is a major thing. And and if there had know, been two shooters, he would be that's dead. It. Yeah. And that's another thing, too. But as you said, Brian, Trump doesn't follow the rules. And there's always been a huge debate on who is the boss. Is it the president or is it the head Secret Service agent there? And there have been numerous conflicts. You know, the one that brought out was uh, Trump wanted to go up on January 6th. Right, in the car, wanted to go, in the steering wheel. And, and finally, although it was later said he didn't grab the steering wheel, but there was certainly he did want to go. And the Secret Service agent either ordered or kept him from going up there. So we know that, you know, and a candidate wants to show, I'm fearless, I'm right. this, and, and the Secret Service is, no. And he did kind of know something. They were up there to help him, so they weren't going to hurt him. In a certain oh, way, right. Trump was right. Now, the other thing, and I made a big deal of it on our show, a uh, regular show on Sunday, um, and I'm still a little unclear about it, the shoe thing. Uh, you know, we know that he asked, we hear on the tape that he asked three times, I got to get my shoes, I got to get my shoes, I got to get my shoes. So my, you know, I'm still not real sure. I've heard that, uh, I've heard that the Secret Service kind of, you know, in jerking him, pulled them off. Uh, I've heard that he had them off if he did, you know, why? That's my question. Not any conspiracy thing, just why would you do that? I've heard that, uh, that's where he, he keeps basically, his crack. Pardon me? That's where he keeps his crack. No, almost as bad. That he has uh, pretty high lifts in his shoes, and he oh, knew shit. that. Didn't want anybody th to see it. Didn't want anybody to see it. So we don't know. But there's something to do with the shoes. Not that it means a big deal. Uh, what we know, I think, is what we can safely say uh, on this segment now, uh, with more to say in, in the days and probably the weeks and maybe the months and maybe even the years to come, is that uh, there was a shooter. Uh, he's been accurately identified, and he is dead. We talked earlier on the show about the fact that while I think the Secret Service had every right to take him out, I think they did their job properly that way. We will never have a trial. So there'll always be some of that uh, Jack Ruby, Lee Harvey Oswald, Kennedy conspiracy stuff behind this. We'll never be able to really put it, put it behind no. it. Plus, it's, it's an age where we even have more conspiracy. Um, it, it appears that once again, not saying this, that the gun uh, that was used was registered in his father's name so once again a young person now again that that's not that's saying anything other than he didn't purchase the gun that's what we're saying uh and we know that donald trump survived and it appears that indeed he was nicked with a bullet so that's not you know anything um uh, and when he says i'm supposed to be dead um if something came that close to me you know, I might say that. And then the last word I would say to everybody is just, again, uh, wait. We don't know the truth. We find out facts. Uh, wow. So I guess the best thing we can say, Brian, with this is, uh, you know, when we come back Sunday with our regular show, I'm sure this will still be a topic of discussion. Good enough. All right. All right. So um, sounds great, Dave. We'll uh, take it from there. So we'll see you soon. Okay. Thanks, man.